Uh, I'm just moving stuff about onto different screens. So I'm not ignoring anybody. If I look off to the side, it's because I've got another screen there and I've got something on there. So don't feel left out at any point. It's not true. Okay. Um, I don't know if anybody else is going to arrive. We're running a little late anyway, so I think we'll just start. Uh, okay. So I'm going to share my screen with you. So I think, Jackie, you were here last week, weren't you, for the first bit? Yes. I think you were the only one. Or was Charlie there? I can't remember. Charlie, remind me. Um, last month. Yeah. Yeah, I was. Okay. Um, so briefly, we just had a quick look at the elements that made up WooCommerce so that you could get an idea as to whether or not um, you could go and sell products um, or have anything because it, you can sell PDFs, for example. So you can sell digital products. It doesn't have to be a physical product that you go out and sell. But I thought we'd just, this time, go and have a more of an in-depth look. I'm, I'm going to create, run through these slides and create a PDF from them. Um, and the video of what we do will also go up on the Academy. So um, the address is there. Go and join it and grab the bits and pieces. Um, uh, and then you don't need to worry too much about making notes or whatever. Um, so what we're going to look at today basically is variations of products. Okay, so um, it may be that you want to sell more than one example of a particular product. We have a quick look at setting up tax, um, and that will apply for not just the UK, but you could set different tax levels for different countries, for example. Uh, and we're going to have a quick look of using the basic functions of WooCommerce for shipping. So if you're selling physical products, okay, how would you set up the shipping to sell those? So I'll give you a, a few little bits and pieces around there and some ideas as to how you could um, add value to your shipping without going any further and just using the basic WooCommerce, okay? Um, so variations. So... Um, selling different colours, for example, so letting the, the buyer choose or different sizes, or as I put there, they could have, I want a green one of those, I want it in this size. So you can have more than one variation that people can pick, okay? So that's what we're talking about with variations of, on products. Um, but first, you need to create the attributes, okay? So you need to create the colours and the sizes, whatever you're going to do. It could be weights, for example, that you're selling stuff by. So you need to create those first. Uh, and for those of you that have seen the dashboard and WooCommerce, um, I'm going to quickly show you the little bits there. Um, but you can create these attributes either as a global attribute or actually on the product itself, okay? So um, for those of you that blog or that are, are aware of the dashboard, you can have, for example, categories for your blog posts, okay? So these attributes you can create in the same way, essentially. Um, so you would go to your products on the dashboard, and as you can see there, if you hover over it, it produces a pop out, and then you can just cl click on your attributes and add them in that way. Um, so in this instance, I've decided we're going to sell things by color. You don't have to put in the slug, okay? It will create it for you. You just need to put in the name and then say add it. And once you've done that, um, you'll see on the side that the, the attribute has appeared and now you've got the configure terms, okay? So we've got a color. Now we want to configure the terms. So now we can sort of say, okay, click through on that. Here's the product colors that we're gonna have. So green, for example. And again, don't worry about the slug, it will create it for you. Um, so I just whacked in a, a bunch of colors, okay? Created each one and set them in. And I've highlighted that bit on the side because if you're a bit sort of um, particular in the way you do things you may want things in a in a set order so either alphabetically perhaps or um i can't think of another way that you'd want to do it or maybe you want to 
you're going to have several greens, so you want to bunch the greens together, but as you get a new line, you add them in. So the bit of highlighted on the side, you can just put your mouse over each one and drag it into a different position, okay? So it's just a nice little way of you keeping things tidy for yourself. Um, we now need to create the variations on the product. Um, so I've perhaps jumped a bit far here because what I've done is I've gone into adding a new product. Okay, so if we can have a quick look at WooCommerce in a bit and you'll see that. Um, and by default, it comes set as a simple product. Okay, so this is, I'm going to sell, um, I don't know, trousers. And that's it. That's all I'm classing my product as is trousers. And it's one size, it's one color, and that's it. That is a simple product, yeah? But we want to make that into a variable product is what we want to select from there, okay? And then we can start adding in our attributes, okay? And because we've created that attribute already, when we click on that list at the top, it's available to us, okay? So if we created a bunch of sizes as well while it was in there, we could put that one in as well. Um, so we want to add it and then we want to save it, okay? Uh, just bear with me a second, there's some outside noise going on. Sean, killing the cat. Oh, nasty. Yeah, I know. I've said when, when COVID's over, I'm coming around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, just close the door. Keep the, keep the riffraff out. <laughs> um, okay, so that... Nasty. Sorry? Don't be mean to nasty. No, he, he's not a problem at the moment. I think he's um, getting a bit old and dodgy, so he doesn't come this far up. Oh. In fact, I don't think he leaves the ground floor anymore. There you go. <laughs> um, so, yes, yeah, so we created our variable. So this is what we're going to, um, our, sorry, we've added in the attributes so that we can have the variables of it. Um, and, and these things are on the side here, as you can see. So it's attributes, adding in our attributes. Um, and then we have to add in the values that we've created, okay? So nice and simple, we can just say select all, yeah? And we want to make it visible on the product page. So that comes ticked by default, the visible on the product page, okay? But what doesn't come ticked is that one when it says used for variations, okay? So we want these colors to be available for our variations. So we have to tick it, okay? Um, if we were doing another product and it, we were just selling it by size and not color as well, we wouldn't need to worry about that one, okay? And now we can go into the variations themselves. I've, I've got a bit sort of carried away there with the bits I was highlighting, the bits I wasn't, but the variations just here, just beneath our attributes. And we simply just make sure this is on add variation and click go, okay? And it will put in the first one here for us. And if you just click to the side of it, it will expand the window, okay? So we can expand the window and now you can see that we can put in various bits and pieces that we can change. So we can add in our price, okay? We can add an image. Um, tax classes, we can put in the weight, all sorts of bits and pieces. If we wanna have a sale price, we can put in a sale price, we can schedule the sale, okay? Schedule when the sale price will be available. Um, always a good idea to put in a stock code. Just create one for yourself if you haven't got one. Okay, so it just helps you later on when you're trying to control stuff. Um, and we can save that. And so that's what I'm calling a simple variation because that's how it looks on the front end. We've created this dress and people can pick it in whatever color and it's 20 quid. Okay. Now that's great, except what are our stock levels for our different colors? Okay, so the chances are we may have 10 black dresses, five red dresses, or whatever. So that's simple, but one, not that great as far as our stock is concerned in controlling our stock. So we can create a more in-depth variation. Okay, so 
what you need you can do now is you can manage stock you tick the button that says manage stock so we're now managing stock at the variation rather than at the product level okay so we can add in our stock quantity um, and do our pricing and bits and pieces add in our image if we wish uh, and then we can add in all the different variations. Okay, so now instead of just having one variation, we've added them in as their individual colors and we've added the stock or whatever levels to them. So now when we look to the front end, we can see when they choose a variation, there's, there's a difference in pricing, okay? Because we've set a different price for a particular product. Does that make sense, everybody? Yeah. Okay, so now I can pick a particular colour and add it to the basket. It's telling me how many there are in stock because I'm controlling the stock at the variation level. And it's also telling me that it's 20 quid, but when you include the VAT, so there's VAT on this item, it's £24. And we'll see how we do that when we come on to the, the tax in a bit, okay? Um, or in this instance... I've made the green dress 45 pound, okay? So pick a different variation, I get a different price automatically, and obviously <laughs> that it impacts on the tax and everything else accordingly. And now I need to have a sip of this too. <laughs> oh. If anybody needs to go and grab a drink or anything, you just go, go for your lives. As the saying goes. Okay, so this is, um, a, a shot I took, so this is not something I've done, this is a shot I took, and you can see that on this particular one, they've included both size and colour, so you can pick both, yeah? So, um, you could have, what else could you have? You could have pick something by dimensions as well, so if you were selling boxes, for instance, you could have people pick them by dimensions, so length or width. Um, I'm not sure that's a particularly good analogy, but um, you, you get the idea of how you can build this up so that people can select their individual items to, to suit themselves. Yeah. Um, so in this particular instance, you can see that these come loaded by colour, whereas ours said choose an option. So I just thought I'd quickly run through that. If you've got um, a basic that you want to give people, um, when you're setting up the variables, you can see here that the default is, and by default, it comes ticked as no default, but you can just pick whichever one you want from there when you're setting it up in the first place. Okay. Um, we'll move on to tax next. Um, I think we're gonna probably have a few more on Woo if people are happy. Um, in the coming months, because there's just so much to it. Um, so I'll show you in a second your dashboard. Um, but you can, when you go into your Woo settings, here's all the tabs across the top that you can do. Um, and we're now going to have a look at tax and, and starting from the left, the tax options. So you need to plan this from the start, okay? If you're going to enter your items exclusive or inclusive of tax okay because once you've got a bunch of them in there if you change that round it will not change the ones that are already in okay so that's just a, a word of warning for you yeah so in in the sorry, particular sorry jackie sorry to interrupt would you mind just saying that again just so I could okay so Thank it you. says here the price is entered with tax you're either going to put it in with tax or you're not. But let's say you decide you're not and you put 20 items in and then you think actually it'd be easier to do it with, the ones that you've already got in won't change. Right, okay. okay? Mm -hmm. So you would, ideally you would need to go and re-input them if that's the way yeah. you're going to do it moving ahead. So it just needs a little bit of thought before you, you, you rush ahead, okay? Okay, thank you. Um, where's your tax going to be calculated on? So um, by default, it comes a shipping address. It could be their billing address. Okay, we'll have, we'll have a quick look in a minute. Um, now, 
round tax at subtotal Sorry, level. So, Sorry, Mark, just a very quick one. Yeah, yeah. Could you, if you don't do it on that, could you do it at the checkout stage? Would it allow you to add it at that stage anyway? Um, yeah, Even so if you, if, you, on the page? if you just look further down, it says, how do you want to display the prices in the shop and how are you going to do it in the basket and checkout? So you can change those two around. Um, and if you go back to, where are we? Okay, to here, and I'll show you this bit in a second, you can also say, that is the pricing or you could do it the other way around and say the price excluding VAT or tax or whatever you want to call it yeah so the option okay. you're, you're not dead and buried if you do it one way and then think oh damn it I should have done it a different way perfect thank you um yeah so I mean this is just showing you how it comes by default okay um do you want to move thank you okay so moving along Still on tax, but we've now gone to standard rates. Okay, so in this instance, I've just put it as 20%, which is our VAT, and that's what I'm calling it. Um, if you leave this blank, so by default, there, there's nothing in there. If you leave it blank, it will do everywhere at the same level. Okay, every country. Um, and then you decide whether your tax is going to be charged on shipping as well. So hopefully you have a quick look at the, the post office or um, uh, DHL or somewhere. And if they charge fat, you're going to pass this on to your customers, yeah? Uh, especially if you're doing business to business. Yeah, because people want to know what they can claim back, don't they? I know we certainly do. What can, what can we have? Okay, so I've just put one in. Obviously, as it says there, you can insert multiple rows. But you can also import a CSV. Okay. Now, the, the other thing to note is you can also export a CSV. That's really quite important because once you've got your tax rate set, export it. Yeah, because if something goes wrong, rather than having to re input it, you can just bang the, the CSV back in and, and you're sussed and off you go. Okay, so in this instance, I left it as it was, just, just one row for everywhere, because we're just doing a quick demonstration. Um, and the tax codes are two letter by country. So like for us, it would be GB. Okay. Um, and or certain areas, you can do it by state as well. So Australia, the states, um, two that's immediately spring to mind. Yeah. So... Um, that would be a live link when you get this PDF, when you download the PDF. So you can just go there and get all the codes that, that you need. Um, so we have a couple of customers that sell all around the world and we've got different tax rates depending on where they sell to. Okay. Just so as you're aware. Um, okay. So in this instance, I've then said, well, let's set in a reduced rate as well. So um i can't i couldn't think of anything off the top of my head martin you may know something that has like a five percent vat rate rather than a 20 percent vat rate um no i can't hear you mate sorry restaurants they've just done it for covid uh, they've okay. reduced their vat to five percent okay um so that's a good one or um things like solar i think solar energy and stuff like that is five percent as well right okay so there's a prime example i did it in our store um as because we were just i just chucked in some clothing issues i just put in a, a child's dress and i put that at five percent okay so i'm just saying i know that it, that's not correct okay but that was just as a for instance to show you OK, uh, and you also note that what I've done here is I've said that for whatever this reduce rate is, that shipping, which comes ticked by default, there is no tax on the shipping for this item. OK. So it's just to show you how, how you can do that. And obviously you can have zero rates as well. So it could be that if you're going to sell stuff into the States, that you're not going to charge tax. OK. So just something for you to be aware of. Um, and so that bit where I was showing you before, where we had the, the prices, we've put in the price excluding, but then show 
where when they get to the item that it's going to be included, it's this little bit here, okay, so where it says price display suffix. So I've added in the fact that it says price included VAT, and then there's this little thing in the squiggly brackets, um, and that's the bit that makes it add up and add the VAT in, yeah, given the tax rates that we've set, okay. Um, and as I said, you could do it the other way around. So if you've put in your prices including, you could have that as saying excluded. That's completely up to you. Um, and there's some other bits and pieces that you can put in there, which is why I said, oh, I think we perhaps have another, another one on Woo um, to give you that. So that would be your tax done. Um, and as I said, that bit there, it, just gives you this bit at the end. You can see I put in price including VAT with the, with the little calculation. So it includes the words as they are after the price and it does the calculation for us. Okay. Okay, shipping was the other one we were gonna look at. Um, so this is how it comes out of the box. With nothing there. Um, so I just said, well, here we go, add a shipping zone, just click on the button and what you're going to call it, okay? And then what are you going to include? So in the regions, just start typing. As you can see, the things pop up for you. If you know the codes, you can just add them in, okay? Um, and again, it's country codes. For this as well. So if you if you're going to sell to the European countries, you need to uh, include them in here. And I would suggest that for yourselves, for ease, anybody that sells anything, you do break it down into things like um, the UK and then Europe. Okay, so it may be that when you check with DHL and people like that for the prices of, of shipping things that they are the same at the moment, okay? But it could fluctuate so greatly that you break things down as much as you can, you break your shipping zones down. That's just a thing, thing I've learned through hard, uh, the school of hard knocks. You know, if, you've got, if you just need to change one bit and it's all in one great big lump, you're stuck. Um, and you can then add a, sh a shipping method once you've created your shipping zone. And by default, that's your choice, okay? Flat rate, free shipping, or local pickup. Now, depending on what it is you're selling, um, local pickup is, could be an option, especially if you're just selling clothes, because people are gonna to wanna to pick them up. Um, and if you're, it may be that you've decided what I'm gonna do is, I'm selling X and I'm going to add the price in to the sale price of what it's going to cost me to ship it. So I know it'll cost me 10 quid to ship it anywhere in the world. So I'm just going to add that in. It saves a hassle. And I'll have free shipping for everything. Okay. Um, it's down to your model that you're using. Um, but in this instance, I have just decided we're going to use flat rate. So you can see now that it's included that in our shipping method and it has enabled it straight away, okay? It comes enabled by default. Now, if we actually click on that, um, it allows us to amend this so that we can say what the flat rate is. Okay, I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, but when we're creating flat rate, we can add extra bits into it. So it's not gonna be five quid and that's what it is. So if I put 10 items in my car, the, the shipping is still gonna cost five quid. Okay, so we can do that. So we can, we can add in things like quantity. Okay, so let's say it is five quid because that's a nice easy number. If you put 10 items in, because we've allowed for the quantity calculation, it's gonna be 50 quid to ship. Okay, it's not gonna be just the five quid. Okay, and we can add in um, a fee. And what I mean by that is we can say, um, we can add in extra bits. So we're going to say, let's say our flat rate is a five is five quid, and then it's a ten percent for every item that's added in. Okay, so you've got your flat rate, and then it's ten percent. 
so it works off on the on the calculation itself so we can have a percentage okay we can set a minimum fee for our additional charges yeah because we've said a flat rate and then we are saying let's just say the 10 a 10 percent is one pound fifty but we know our admin is going to cost us three quid okay so we can set the minimum rate as three quid Does that make sense, everyone? Okay, and again, we can set a maximum because we want to keep our customers sweet, so we don't want them paying over the odds if we can swallow the costs. Yeah. So we put in our our flat rate. We decide whether or not it's taxable, and then we put in our cost. So I've said our flat rate is ten quid plus. We're going to have a fee percentage of 10. So we're putting 10% on. Yeah. And a minimum fee of three quid. So that's why I said that's why I said for our shipping, which comes out like that. Okay, so we've got three items in, and our flat rate percentage is 10. Plus our 10%, which is, what's it, 450, isn't it? Does that make sense? If I show it to you, it's like that. So we've got a flat rate of 10. We've got three items at 15 quid with 10%, which gives us another 450. Plus we've got one item at 20 quid, which is another 10%. So that's our total. That's how that total is, is made up there, our flat rate. Yeah, everybody's yeah. nodding. Yeah. Got it. Excellent. Okay, so because we put a minimum in there, if we just said we're having one dress at 15 quid, okay, and our flat rate was tenner, and because we had 10%, it would be £1.50, wouldn't it? So that it would be £11.50, but we've set our minimum at three quid. So it's brought it up to 13 quid. Yeah. Again, flat rate is 10 quid. One item at 15 is 10%, but because we set the minimum at three, it's, it's set it at 13 pounds. Yeah. So we're not going to be out of pocket for what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, now, I then thought, let's do local pickup. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I thought I'd add that in. Now, this is quite important. You need to make sure this is set to none, because otherwise <laughs> they will get billed tax for something they're going to come and collect. So it's just before you start having to explain to people what's going on or what shouldn't be going on and having to offer refunds and whatever, if you are going to have people come and collect stuff, it's just something to bear in mind, yeah? Um, and... I strongly advise you don't charge people to come and collect stuff. Um, so shipping options is the next one along on that tab. Um, so this is how it comes set as default, okay? So enable the shipping calculator on the bar. I think that's always a good one to have rather than making people go to check out to find out how much their shipping's gonna cost them, yeah? Yeah. Because that, if you've put 100 quids worth in the basket and you think that's all you're paying and you hit the next button and all of a sudden there's 140 quid, you're, you're going potentially to lose customers. That's just a, if you, if you think you don't like to be surprised, so don't surprise your customers, yeah? Um, that's always, that can be a good one to hide the shipping costs. Okay, so it's actually making them fill something in. Um, again, it, it's dependent on your business model, so I, I would keep that in, in mind when you're doing it. Um, and what it's saying is that basically, this is how it's going to, by default, set up the shipping, okay? Um, and again, if you sell a lot of stuff that is intended as gifts, for example, um, you may want to check that because if people are selling 
buying stuff for other people, especially if they're buying it here for people in the States, your shipping may want to tick that other box, yeah? Just as a, as a for instance. Um, you only need to enable, tick the enable debug mode if you've got problems, if things aren't calculated properly. Apart from that, you don't need it. Uh, and the last one is your shipping classes. Okay, so in this instance, um, to give you the easiest way to get your head around it, I thought the thing to do would be to say, let's have bulky items or fragile items. Okay, so what we're talking about is an additional cost to the business to ship these things. Okay, so uh, again, don't worry about the slug, it'll add it in. So you can just keep adding away until you've got in all the ones that you need and then save. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Um, you'll notice on the end, there's a thing that says product count. And when you save, oops, missed one. Yeah, I've missed a slide. Sorry, I think I've missed a slide. Okay, when you hit save, it will come up and it will say, those will be zeros. Okay, because you have not assigned this, because you're just creating them to a, uh, a product yet, okay? And there's, um, there's several ways to do it. If you go into your products um, and just hover over it and go and say you're gonna edit, um, and then you're into your product and you go down to this area here, shipping classes, and you can say, well, this product here is bulky or it's fragile. So that's to add a single one. Or to add it to products, you can tick multiple products, select edit on your on this bulk actions here, then apply that and it will come up and say, these are the products that you've, you've picked and you can come down to here and say, these are all bulky or fragile or whatever, yeah. Um, and you can add it individually to variable products. So you go into your variable product, um, as I say, you pick your product, click just to the side of it, it'll open it up and you can say there. So you can either set it at the top level and say everything under here, so all of these variables will be bulky, or you can go in and say, well, actually the red one is bulky, the green one is fragile. So you can do them individually, yeah? So now we need to go and put that into our shipping. So in this instance, um, that flat rate percentage, as I called it, just for the sake of demonstration, and it's not a good look because it shows up on your basket in your checkout, it says flat rate percentage, it means nothing to your, <laughs> to your clients. So while I was in there, I thought, well, let's just change that as well. So I've changed that to shipping, okay? And now because we've added in those um, shipping classes, all of a sudden shipping class costs appears down here. It wasn't there before but because we've included them, it's now available here, okay? And so what we're saying is our, build, our, our bulky shopping classes cost us an extra 10 pounds to ship it, okay? And if it's fragile, it costs us an extra 15. So we've added those in. So now, when we go and look at our shipping costs, it's gone up, as you can see, okay? So before it was 13 pounds to ship this red dress, and now it's gone up to 23 because we've classed it as a bulky item. All happy with that? Yeah. So your control over all of your um, bits and pieces is really quite phenomenal right down to individual you know a, a blue t-shirt is more expensive than a red t-shirt and here's the reasons why as far as you're concerned and you can add them into your products um, Martin I can see a thing for you potentially on there using WooCommerce to sell your products have you got them packaged to that extent 
Yeah, okay. And, and can you see anything there, Jackie, for yourself? Um, not specifically. I, think, I thought it was interesting when you um, said about PDS because it's one of those things that you tend to forget about, don't you? Um, but um, all this is really useful stuff to store away in the grey cells. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Roger, have you got any clients that could benefit from this, do you think? Well, um, I've got one that I think you know about that um, I've got WooCommerce. I've never touched it at all, so this is quite interesting for me. Oh, um, you... AEE? A -A -A -E, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, this is what they could achieve if they just sit and did a bit of planning first. Um, I mean, we, we always say that you start with your your paper and your crayons and plan what you want to do first. And then it would make far more sense to take that and mm. then look at this to make what you've drawn actually happen. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what else. Oh, yeah. So the, there are other ways. I mean, I just did a quick search on weight-based shipping. So if you're selling items of a weight, okay, um, and we do this for a couple of our clients, we've got this set up for them. Um, so every item has a weight. Because if you, if you think about it, people like uh, Parcel Force, people like that, it, it's how much weight is the package to send generally. Um, and if you've got, especially some clothes and things like that, by the time people put in 10 jumpers and three skirts and four pairs of trousers, every item, I mean, it's a bit more involved when you're putting the stock in in the first place, but it does make life easier, especially for the clients as well. Um, because the way we've got it set, if, if you pay, if you buy three items, you're paying a percentage. Whereas the actual cost to send them may be very much smaller. Yeah, so um, like I said, especially on things like clothes, so, you know, it, it doesn't go up exponentially if you buy 10 pairs of socks instead of five. It, it, it just goes up by the amount of weight. Uh, and for some people, um, one of our clients sells glass. Now, Charlie, you know um, Tabitha. Yeah, Tabitha, yeah. So she has the option to, to sell in grams or ounces, depending on which market she's selling to, because it goes to the States and things like that. And then um, a lot of it gets shipped by DHL and people like that who take their packages, they sell to, there to you on weight. So you put the same thing out to your clients rather than, it makes it far more flexible than that weight Based at uh, flat rate, which as you can see, before you know where you are, can become quite um, cumbersome if you sell lots and lots of products. And if you think to yourself, oh, every week I'm going to create a product, <coughs> oh, excuse me, you may actually have to go and create another category in your flat rate just to cover that product. Mm. So it may be from that point of view, if, if that's how your business operates and you're going to be bringing on new lines all the time, selling, doing stuff by weight could be a far easier way of doing it. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Um, that said, I will turn that into a PDF, which will be available for you to just grab and download. Um, this video will also be available. Um, is it, does anybody want me to go through anything in particular that we looked at there live on the live site? Well, I say live, it's our site, so it's, it's only the demo addresses that I created. Mark, have you played with the subscription add-on for WooCommerce? Um, only to a very basic level. And I think that was for looking at it for those clients that Roger was just talking about, if, if memory serves. Because I've I've bought it, I bought it back in the summer, and I just haven't, I haven't had a chance. It's the age old thing of, yeah, yeah I want to do subscription modelling, um, buy that as a bolt on, and in fact, just haven't done anything with it. And the same as the online payment gateway, I need to get that sorted out. So there might well be a job coming your way, Mark, for this anyway. I think um, payment gateways are quite um, easy to implement. Um, a lot of it. The only problem you may have with a payment gateway, and we've run across this ourselves, is PayPal. Okay. 
I can't use PayPal. Which no, is that's okay. Real... You're, you're safe because PayPal will only allow you in one PayPal account to have one, um, what do they call, I can't remember what they call it now. It's like an endpoint. So basically, if anybody buys from PayPal, you can have this return URL. So it's nice to send people back to the website once they've finished and say thank you for your purchase. But if you're trying to run two web, websites, so let's just say you, you were trying to sell dresses on one and men's suits on the other, you've only got one return URL. So somebody is mm. going to end up back at somewhere they didn't actually buy from. So it, it, it can be a bit complicated um, trying to, to get a workaround for that. Um, Stripe's quite in, simple to use. Um, most of them, it's yeah. You you just take the information from the account, like the Stripe account, and put it into the fields within the add-on for WooCommerce. Okay, great. It, it's it really is that simple. Most of them. Um, some of them can be a bit finicky. Uh, the biggest problem that you'll you'll ever run into, well, I said ninety percent of the time is a, a conflict with another plugin that you may already have. Okay, um, things to bear in mind, if you haven't already got an SSL certificate, so if it doesn't say H2TPS up here, okay, your payment gateways likely will not work. Okay. Um, you've all seen the, oh, I'm, I'm sure you've all seen the unsecure message that you, you get at the front end, okay? And that's what that means is that the communication between the website and the server is unsecure, okay? It doesn't mean the website itself is unsecure, but obviously that information that's passing backwards and forwards, part of it is potentially going to be your credit card details or your PayPal details or whatever. So that's why... If, if, you, if you're looking to buy something and it doesn't say HTTPS up there, I would strongly advise that you don't buy from there. Okay, so well, from that point of view, it, it's a, a peace of mind thing for your clients rather than anything else. Mark, sorry. Oh. Uh, hi. How do you integrate um, the plugin or whatever it is? Maybe you have already addressed that before. Uh, for um, the customer to put on their uh, bank details or credit card details. And how do you do for all that to be secure for the customer? Okay, so... Um, Thank you. I'm not sure if we got one on here. Let's just have a quick look. Sorry, because I'm logged in, this is a bit slow. I'll just have a quick look. Uh, Okay, I've, I have got WooCommerce Stripe Gateway, so let's activate that. Okay, so if you go into your settings for WooCommerce, and then we have payments up here. So we switch on, turn on the payments. Now Stripe, as you can see, because I've activated, has ad added these bits in, and if anything that says Stripe, but PayPal standards, cash on delivery, check payments, obviously we don't do that in, in this country anymore, and direct bank transfer are all available, all not enabled, obviously, um, but you can just enable the Stripe that we just put in, and then you can set it up using the button on the side. Thank you. Okay, now you can see it's saying this information I need. Yeah, you can, I suggested turn test mode off. I put that on to test the payment system works. Okay, which is exactly what it's designed for. Um, and now it says it wants your Stripe account keys. Yeah. And you have to go to your Stripe account to get that information. And if you, if you don't know where it is, Stripe's normally quite good with their help. Um, PayPal, not brilliant, but um, there are plenty of videos and things out there for you to find out how to do it. In fact, if I, let's have a quick look and see if I can set PayPal going. It may be the, the basic PayPal may be simple. 
to set up the standard. Can't remember. Uh, there's also an additional plugin you can get. So you've got, um, yeah, so it wants your email. That's not our actual email for it, thank God. That's the admin email, which is put in by default. Um, yeah, and it's going to ask you for your API details, all of which you can just get from PayPal and put in there, and then you're good to go. Um, you may need, if you're going to do um, subscriptions, Martin, you may need a, a, a PayPal plugin as well, a WooCommerce PayPal plugin, not just the basic one. Yeah, I bought the, the WooCommerce subscription plugin. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I imagine it's going to want the, the more advanced. It won't, I don't think it will work with that off the top of my head, but with that basic PayPal. So, there'll be another plugin to put in. Um, most of the um, payment gateway plugins are now free. Uh, it used to be that you had to pay for them. Um, but I think that um, that was probably because they were being done by independent developers who were then trying to get their money back. Uh, and now they've been taken in house for a lot of them. So you can also integrate things in here like Google Analytics, Facebook, so um, if you're running uh, a, a shop, shall we say, rather than just selling things for your business, but if you're running a shop, obviously it's a good idea to integrate it with Facebook so people can go and see on Facebook what you've got. It's all on your page. So it will build a catalog up for you on Facebook in that respect. So Christina, hopefully that answered your question. Uh, yes, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I am just starting with all this. I'm not sure if I will end up implementing it or not, but it's good to, to, to understand what is in the, the work required in the background. And mm -hmm. for me, it's important to understand if the application is safe for the customers. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and we were looking at variations earlier, so don't forget, um, it doesn't have to be a physical product. You could sell hours of time, as a for instance. Yeah, so your variation could be to pick the different amount of hours. Yeah, for consultancy, yeah. Uh, uh, so, yeah, so for consultancy, or it may be, um, I'm trying to think of, of other things around that now. So it may be that if uh, somebody wants assistance with a form, you have one rate, and if they want you to actually do it, there is another rate. Mm -hmm. So that's another variation possibility. You know, so it's like an admin to just for somebody in the office to say, now tick box one and then go to page three. Or if they want to send it in with all their bits and pieces for you to do it, it's a different rate. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Martin, I was thinking of that one for you, especially if, if people just want an, an hour or a half hour's consultancy. That, yeah. That could just be a product and your variation is to pick the half hour or whatever. Um, and then you can use various other plugins to get them, to, once they've purchased, it sends them to a thing where they then fill in their name and their email. So we do it for um, a company, health and safety company who once somebody's bought a course, it then says to them, like, who's going to attend? Because just because John at the Builders bought the course for five people, you want to know the names that are going to attend for health and safety of your own. You don't want to just put John the Builder five times. Yeah. So, you know, there's ways and means of, of integrating it into most businesses if you uh, think, think about it like that. Yeah, it's really good. Thank you. So hopefully everybody, uh, if there's no more questions, that is, um, you, you've, all, you've got a little bit more knowledge about um, what it could do. Um, and more importantly, you've got an idea of how it could integrate for yourselves in your businesses. 